Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of SRB TV. We're I'm back Chris. again. Sorry, we already said that. <laughs> I'm Kristen. I'm Christopher. And on today's episode, we're tackling a uh, second episode of the series of Unfortunate Events on Netflix. Um, yes. This is the final part of book one called The Bad Beginning Part, part two. two. Pretty much. Um, last we left off, the kids uh, found out their house was burned down, their parents dead. Or so we thought, um, and they're forced to live with um, their first relative, Count Olaf. Count Olaf, yeah. A wannabe um, actor who has his own trio of, um, of uh, I guess, theater group. His own, his theater, own theater group. He has his own theater group, pretty much. And we find out later that he's he knows about the inheritance, and he's just he's just making him live there until she's old enough so he can take the inheritance from yeah. her. Or some other way, which we'll find out. I guess, later on, out. yeah. You'll probably find out later on the other way. Another way to um, do it. So that way, um, continuing on, uh, we meet the next door neighbor. Yeah, the judge, pretty played much. Played by Joan Cusack, who's yeah. very sweet. Um, and we start getting kind of like, a, like laws on the adoption. Laws, yeah, the laws of adoption, pretty much. She's yeah. reading that, so hinting at something in the future, possibly, of them living, you know, with her or anything like that, of her fully adopting them. And then the big twist comes <coughs> at the end where we find out not only are the kids' parents, the Bullier's kids' parents still alive, yeah. but they're being played by uh, Larnett and, and um, Colby Smothers. Colby Smothers, pretty Smothers, much. yeah. And found out they're alive, but some looks appears to be kidnapped. Looks like so, being, yeah. So as far as we know right now, they're alive. Yeah, as of as of right now, that's all we think of is that they're still alive right now. And the only clues we got regarding Lemony Stick himself yeah. is that he is researching along the way as the the, 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 the story of the Bowler kids and yeah. their journey through these different. And like, in a way, he's pretty much telling telling us his journey through investigating this, the things he's found, the things he stumbled upon along the way, as pretty much we're following the story yeah. as well. So let's. Let's just get, get right into it and see what happens since the kids are now starting to realize, you know, Count Olaf is not a good guy at all. You know, they're finally realizing they thought, oh, the happy things. No, no, not, not even close. Mm -hmm. So let's just dive right into this and we'll see you guys in the post show. So enjoy us watching the show for episode two for the bad beginning part. Let's turn the story began on this gray and cloudy morning in Brunnett Beach where the Baudelaire children, Violet, Klaus, and Sonny received terrible news. Your parents have perished in a terrible fire. In fact, the tale of the Baudelaire orphans begins long before the fire, which left the children with practically nothing to their names. Their story begins before their brief and unpleasant stay with the Poe family. It begins before the children meet Justice Strauss, a nice lady who unfortunately... It's a nice way to previously. Like previously. Before the Baudelaire orphans were placed under the care of a terrible actor with a mysterious tattoo of an eye in his ankle, who made the Baudelaire sleep in an awful room. Do a series of difficult and irritating chores, and cook dinner for his disreputable and largely untalented theater troupe, resulting in an act of that that the to be shown on the screen. Right there. Why are you right? Do you know what the question I'm asked most is? Will you please leave the premises? Why do I? Do <laughs> don't they ask me. Why are you an actor? Why not a model or a millionaire playboy? Why respond to the siren song that the Spanish call El Theater? For fame and fortune. No. For standing ovation. No. For the costumes. Where are the costumes? No, where are the costumes? No, where are the costumes? Nobody brought the costumes! I am here to consult what? you on the Baudelaire will, for which I understand you are the executioner. Executor. Person who controls people's fortunes after a terrible fire has just happened. My name. Is Jessica Haircut. Jessica Haircut. That's strange. I have an appointment for a haircut right now. Jacqueline. Please cancel that haircut. Mr. Poe, there's an urgent matter. Bill, I want to hear what this man haircut has to say. Jessica. Jessica haircut. Stupidest name I've ever heard. Wait. 
That's, 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 that's a spyglass. That's a spyglass. How many people are involved? I'd like to make a withdrawal. Well, I don't know, Mr. Like oh, Count. Man. Count. Guess I'll get it myself. These events at Mulctuary Money Management resulted in unfortunate events far and near from a woman trapped in a remote park. He'll never get away with this. I already did get away with it. The three orphans in horrifying circumstances is our story resumes. So, he's not actually related to them, for the sound of it. Supposed to mean a horrible state when he took us here. There's no way our parents would want us in Count Olaf's care if we can No, he's not related to them. He just found out about the whole layers. Being we're not going to protect the streets this Sometime. day any longer. Who knows what would happen to us on the street? I still leave a roof over our head. I wish our parents' money could be used now instead of a new coat of age. Yes. Yes. Absolutely not. Thank you. I'm sorry, what were we talking about? Oh, yes, Count Olaf. I'm sorry, you don't have a good first impression of him. He only provides us with one bed. He makes us do a great many difficult chores. Excuse me. Hold here. Seven. 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 Really? Philip. Anything but seven. Philip. Anything Philip. but seven. You're welcome. Seven. 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 Anything but seven. seven. Everyone at some time in their life wishes they were being raised by people different than the ones who were raising you. When I was a little boy, I would have Where's fucking I child services? I know. Where's that? That's the whole point. Or, 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 because even the kids complain, they'll at least have somebody come over and wa look around. Speaking of not understanding a word someone is saying, <laughs> the actor is acting as your parent. And as your legal guardian, Count Olaf may raise you using any method he sees fit, so I'm sorry. We're child services. Oh, control. fuck that! Like Good child services, man! Service, but there are certain things you must get used to. Now, I'm sorry if I have to usher you out post haste, but holy crap! Post haste, you know, I go to the judge. I go to the judge because she gets she goes she can lose the ins and the outs. Finish tapping up that report. I think we need to call the IT guys. Your man works for Count Olaf. He did say Count Olaf is one of his professional contacts. It was good seeing you. We're not going back to Count Olaf's house. Look at Klaus's face. Oh no, no, no. Look at mine. What the fuck? The hook. Professionally, I'd hate to disgrace your good name and the name of Al Fun Koo. Plus, I'll be very busy the next few weeks working on my inventions and learning how to prepare roast beef. Which round is looking for? You notice the, like, the ceramic glass in the back? Ceramic glass and looking on the ceiling. Yeah. On the ceiling, you see the, the same logo. That's the symbol. They just don't realize it yet. The point is, I can order you to participate, and you must obey. Which. I think it's the biggest problem I have right now with this show is that. Now go talk to the woman in the wood. In the wood. I'm trying to tell you looking at you anymore. And they're still all three at the same time. They're store abroad. Hey. <laughs> Call me your guardian actor. Justice Strauss, you are about to find your drab, legal, beagle existence transformed into something mind-blowing and yet extremely classy when you become the exciting new face of the next Count Olaf production. You have got the star quality necessary for a small walk-on role in Al Funkut's new play. I want to be actress in made of me. I swear to God, it's a made-up name. I swear because of my posture, and so I went into the law. But now, now you can see it. The curtain rises. Mm -hmm. The audience applauds. Oh, yeah. Suddenly, find yourself in the enviable position of being a struggling actress in middle age. It's almost too good to be true. It is, Justice Jobs. Count Olaf. Count Olaf. 
is welcoming you into his life by making you an important part of this theatrical enterprise. Joe, go. Go home. Now, uh, see, in the movie, they just skip to them going to different relatives and then went to the marriage scene. Yeah. This one, they're going straight to the marriage. But. Come, dear. See is the truth. Seize the day. I said that. I said that. <laughs> Seize the children. Boss, I have three kinds of buttercream icing here for you to sample. One's vanilla, one has a hint of nutmeg, <laughs> and the other's a little lemony. I told you never to say that word. Lemony. Lemony. Oh, get it? Oh, lemony. lemony. No, I told you never see that until word. Friday. I have no use for them until then. Uh, except to cook dinner. We'll order takeout. Ella can get married if she has the permission of her legal guardian. Oh. She has. Yeah. In fact, she has more than permission. She has enthusiasm. Oh, you found a loophole. He has parole for us to participate in yeah. the horrible plot. If Mr. Pole will hear about this, your play will not be performed and you will go to jail. So, he found a loophole. Low, low. He found a loophole. Yeah. For as long as he's legal guardian, he can make her do anything. The clever boy with the horrible glasses has just figured out our dastardly plan. <gasps> Yes, thanks to his stupendous library book, the orphans have achieved a grand victory over our evil ways. Oh no, whatever will we do? I guess we will go to jail for a very long time. I guess that proves reading really is fundamental. Violence. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Brave. Children who read so much, you two are remarkably unintelligent. She's not here. Oh, don't look so down. I'd say things are looking up. 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 Now see. That's fucking child abuse. Yeah. That is so fucking obviously child abuse. Well, if you really want me to let her go, I will. But even a stupid brat like you might realize it if I let her go. Or more accurately, if I have my comrade let her go. Hi. Sunny might not survive the fall to the ground. That's a 30 foot tower, which is a very long way from the This is where their genius even when she's to kick in. Cage. But if you want to do it, please, she's just a baby. We'll do anything, anything. Just don't harm her. And things are disastrous. Everything's gone wrong. I thought so. Dr. Montgomery and I were expecting to borrow our children days ago. Dr. Montgomery was supposed to be the new guardian. That's what the Butler parents wanted in case of fire. What went wrong? Why haven't we seen her? Mr. Poe listened to the advice of a consultant. Consultant? Dear God, why would anyone listen to a consultant? I'll give you a hint. His name rhymes with Rice Pilaf. Are you free Friday night to attend a theater? We might be able to get things back on track without calling attention to ourselves. Of course. But what shall we do until then? Could you cut these ropes for me? The children must be so frightened. We're all frightened, Gustav. So okay, so, so there's actually somebody trying to protect the children. They are trying to protect the children. You can't my bed. You sunnies. You stayed up all last night trying to find out Count Olaf's plot. I don't get why they don't want to. Oh, look who it is. I don't fucking care. Um, I, why didn't they try to lock pick the, um, lock? And how do you respond to rumors that this whole production is nothing more than an evil plot? Evil plot? The only evil plot going on is the one you'll see on stage. Take your seats. All right, curtain 8 p.m. Yeah. Intermission 9.15. Yeah. Act 2, 9.30. Unless concession sales are strong. Yeah. The wedding will be around 10 p.m. Followed by champagne toast, reception with cake and finger food, and the after party the next day. Yeah. After party the next day, please. I'm just glad the Baudelaire's are adjusting to their new life. You're a fucking moron. Your parent, your wife's a fucking fat bitch. All my anxieties are put to rest. Oh my god, I hate you so much. I really do. Okay, so the funny business and it's curtains for your baby sister. You see, curtains means that your sister will be dropped out of the window. But it's also a sort of play on theatrical curtains. One minute. Falsely. Well, they're like, this is a long song. Look, 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 Yeah. You have 
got nothing, man. You got nothing. Oh, damn! She's got Please your stop. ass wrecked, I'm son. But I'm only one That's man. a full house. Is this very handsome man shall be mine. By the gardens of Worthington. If I can't have him, my heart will literally break. What the hell? Exactly. I hope they figuratively break. Why? Literally, what I'm a, a handsome fear. adventures I have had. Only to end up at this same ball and this served. This has not been a scene of fiction. My marriage to Violet Baudelaire is perfectly legal, and I am now in control of her entire fortune. Oh my god. You know she can just rip that up, right? Why don't you just keep that part to yourself? And sign the appropriate document in her own hand. And all of you, ladies and gentlemen, are witnesses. Violet from the towers, not old enough to marry. She is, if her legal guardian allows it, and in addition to being her husband, I am also her legal guardian. But that piece of paper is not an official document. It's, it's just a stage prop. If you look closely enough, I think you'll see that it is figuratively real. Literally. I said literally. I'm afraid this marriage is entirely binding. Violet? You can rip it up! The fuck? Paper in your own hand. Come, Olaf, you are now Violet's legal husband. Let's stop. First, let Sonny go. Where is Sonny? I'm afraid she's tied up at the moment, if you'll forgive my little joke. <laughs> See, it's a little play on words, all tied up. Oh my god, we get it. You promised to let her go. What kind of husband would I be if I didn't keep my promises? Drop the pit, squeak to her death. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh, idiot, what are you doing? Oh, I had to bring her here. She had a straight flush. She had a straight flush! You oh, escaped, you little dish rag. Well, I'm still married to Violet, and I will dispense with you on our honeymoon. You're my wife, but you are still my daughter. Do you honestly believe that I will allow you to continue to care for these three children after the treachery I've seen here tonight? Fuck have you been? Are you considering firing your associate as my secretary? Here, here. Jacqueline, is that you? Where have you been? I was kidnapped by Count Olaf's associates and tied to a tree before I could tell you that the Baudelaire's uncle, Dr. Montgomery, was designated by the parents as their legal guardian and husband waiting to hear from me. Dr. Montgomery? I've never heard of him. Well, you are hereby rehired as my secretary with an 8% increase in salary. The Baudelaire's will be sent to a suitable guardian, and this series of unfortunate events has come to a close. Or at least for this book. Count Olaf. Not for Count Olaf. I'll get my hands on your fortune if it's the last thing I do. And when I have it, I will tear you and your siblings from them to them. Not funny, guys. The theatrical reviews are the most boring part of the paper, but I bet you little stage hogs are about to make the front page again. The front page. The problem is, some people think they're stuck up rich kids. Same for the children. Honestly, they're not. They're, they're, not. they're actually honestly good kids who children. just have, are part they're of a wealthy like establishment. Exactly. Things are worse than we thought. They almost always are. Every moment the children are without us drags them deeper into danger. And you don't have the moment to lose. What's a woman like you building in a place like this? <laughs> Grappling hook. Oh. Oh. Molotov cocktail. Molotov cocktail. You? They've no stone on turn. <laughs> So it's clear to me now that the parents in this show are complete morons. <laughs> They're complete morons. Yeah, pretty much. No, not parents. The adults in general. And I think I brought this up in the previous flick, and I think that's the story, is that we're supposed to defend, we're supposed to look at it from the children's point of view. Their point of view, that's what it is. And nobody, like the parent, uh, older people are, we're supposed to like, Okay, let me see. It's like we said in the last episode, pretty much. It's like, the, it, it's like they think the children are not smart or anything like that. They just think 
they're just, like you said, they're wealthy children, they're spoiled, things like that. You know, and, and it's like, from the, their perspective, it's like, they're smart kids. You know, they're, they're, they're really smart. Well, like they I said, the themselves. point of the book series is to make the kids smart, but the, the adults dumb. Yeah, dumb. So that way we have, you know, kids, we can, the, the kids can read about, look up to them. Yeah, look up to the kids. Instead of looking up at, to the adults. Yeah, like a like a kid they can, like a kid that inspires them instead. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Because the adults in here are a bunch of fucking morons. The banker, the judge. Okay, I'll admit the judge. The got, judge had his moments. The you know, the judge had its moments. You know what? You know she bounced back. You know she she was she didn't she realized you know and of course a dumbass other family the Poe. Guy, pretty much uh, mm -hmm. the banker. Yeah. Which again, like I said, doesn't doesn't make no sense where the child services are not kicking in. It's like saying as if the bank is the one, as if the bank's child services or something like that. Even though yeah. they're just supposed to be controlling the money. I like where the fuck are child services? Is the question I kept on saying. Yeah. Um. Um. It was still a fun, fun episode. It was so funny. Yeah, it was still good. I love fun, I had a fun moments. Yeah. We stole mystery around the symbol, which we still the know. Symbol, the symbol. Yeah, the and logo. the spyglass. Yeah, the spyglass, an organization that their parents are a part of. Yeah. That's the question, pretty much. And it looks like to me, it feels like there's a deeper, like you know, there like like he said, like he said, I think Count Olaf is like only one of you know a few. That have turned pretty much on their own organization. Yeah. So that's what they're doing. So in a way, that's what it feels like. So that's how I come. I see, you know, you know, when you got shot with that feather, you know, knocked them out, you know, killed them right there. It's a, it's a type of thing where it feels like there's another organization that he's a part of. You know, that he probably strayed around from this other organization that they're a part of. He strayed from it into this other one. And now it's like, now he's trying to, you know, gain their, the money and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what it feels like it's leading into. How there's another competitive type of organization. Yeah. You know, and of course... Like they're capture, kidnap the kid, the parents. The parents, exactly. And look where they're at, though. Because even the, the parents, like I said, the symbol's on the floor. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that symbol is a good symbol for them or a bad... That's where, that's where it makes no sense. Because it looks like it's, they're locking them up in their own place. From the looks of it. And it makes... It's confusing. But it's cool is that you get to see where they get their inventive skills from. You know, they're, you know, where yeah. the daughter gets it from his, her mom, and then, you know, the genius part of it is from the father. Yeah. You know, and the little one, it probably is just, you know, just the, you know, of course, it's probably a mixture of both, probably. Yeah. So only time will tell where they wind up, and now they wind up with Dr. Montgomery, who, if the movie serves right, is um, a um, herb herbatologist. Yeah. Herbatologist. Yeah. You know, one who studies reptiles and stuff. So that's where we're going to take off in the next part. So. Yeah, and, yeah, in and, uh, and, uh, the next book, pretty much. The next yeah. two episodes, pretty much, are dealing with book two. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's so far, it's, like, it's gotten interesting. And I like how, was it, uh, even though he's sneaking, pretty much, he's getting to the point where he's, like, he was showing, going, yeah, this is what's going on, this is what's happening, you know, but it's the type of thing where, it's like, they're all of his, his findings, it's like, it's still trying to piece everything together. See, even in his office, you saw, like, everything he's been trying to connect. So it looks like he's still investigating. Yeah, yeah. Only time will tell. Actually, he's actually up to and things like that. Exactly. And I like how they drop kind of like the kind of like a fourth wall type of thing when he's just like, and this one, you know, this one, this one, and then this one's kind of lemony. Don't use that word. You know, it's just like, ooh, really? Yeah. You know, it's pretty cool. But um, it's it's getting again, it's getting interesting. Can't wait to move on to the next episode next week. Um, again. Usually we're trying to do this, like I said, uh, week by week basis. We just we haven't done it recently because of Hurricane Irma. Now that we're back on schedule, back on track, we're gonna try to get into each episode once a week, pretty much, bring it to you guys. But yeah. you know what? It's a good episode. I can't wait for the next one. Yeah, same here. So other than that, though, if you're new to the channel, you can hit the like button. If you want to talk more about stuff like this? Comment down below. If you want to share us around, share it around, and if you feel like it's just a little bit more than anybody else when calling a piece of cake lemony. Hit the subscribe button down below or at the end of this video. Yeah, and just like you said, just comment down on what you thought of our reaction. Again, if you want to see more of our episodes of SRB TV, like I said, um, we'll, you know, we'll try to do more. We'll try to do it slowly, but, you know, not like, you know, other channels, like I said before, that do almost so many series. We're only doing certain series. That's it. Ones that 
we know, okay, we can keep up with for now. And this, for now, this is our first try. So, again, let us know what you think. Um, oh, you know, how we're doing this. Just let us know in the comments down below. Yeah. So, until next time, I'm Kristen. I'm Christopher. And on the next SRB TV, we'll be, of course, tackling um, part one of book two. Yes. So, we'll see you later. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Yeah, and if you want to see any more of our videos, check out the playlist links down below in the description. And you can also check out our Twitter uh, account pretty much uh, down below at Super React Bros.